It's official, body cam is a thing now. This nascent subgenre is gaining traction, with developers hoping to inject newfound levels of shaky realism into their games. Tactical SWAT shooter Unrecord ruffled feathers last year after revealing its unsettlingly nausea-inducing first-person gunplay. The naysayers among us believing the fisheye aesthetic to be too close to the bone. Digested plunges us body-first into gloomy forests, shadowed by giant snakes, while fellow body cam horror parents normal tales, offers creepy vignettes in which to tiptoe through the lens of movie-style found footage. Of course, there's an aptly titled Body Cam, a multiplayer shooter in a similar wheelhouse to Unrecord, only this time giving more than one player a chance to indulge in sickly real firefights simultaneously. The latest to throw its hat into the increasingly proverbial body cam ring is Second Loop, and it's perfect for you if you wish to experience the virtues games portrayed through this singular perspective can provide, but don't fancy pitting yourself against ghosts or shooting stuff as a cop. Good news, as Second Loop has neither. Instead, you'll be entering a rain-soaked dystopian world, scaling industrial megastructures, destroying mechs, and partaking in some contraption construction. While there's a story you've heard a million times before, which to summarize, sees you battling oppressive forces as part of a resistance in a bleak alt-future, chances are it's not the narrative that'll draw you to this game. No, it's those super cool gravity-defying physics, gifting you the power to catch, lift, reshape, and connect debris to concoct ramshackle machinery that'll overcome obstacles or solve environmental puzzles. Before we go on though, Second Loop developer Kakaru is describing this game's visual perspective as semi-body cam, which to be fair seems an appropriate refinement. After all, is it truly body cam if the viewpoint is eye level? Sure, body cam's trademark wobbliness is there, but we're definitely looking down the sight of a gun when shooting. Unrecord circumvents this semantic disparity, as it's not unusual for police officers to have cameras embedded into their helmets. But here, as you're in command of a robot mech in second loop, it seems Kakaru are navigating a similar loophole. Your robot's eyes are cameras, maybe. Either way, there's a distinct immersiveness in body cam style, more lifelike in terms of movement for sure. And that's at least replicated here in service of the gameplay, not to its detriment. Back to the telekinetic construction, Kakaru's blurb goes on to say, If you can dream it, build it. With the developer outlining eccentric sports cars with tank treads, to aircrafts as a couple of possibilities. A GIF on the game's Steam page demonstrates the outcome if you affix four office fans to a suitcase, at least it looks like a suitcase, to fashion a hoverboard of sorts, the contraption whirs airward uncontrollably. Now, including an unorthodox vessel such as a fan-powered hoverboard flailing wayward on the Steam page instead of, say, a highly controllable floating construct upon which we can traverse, unjumpable gaps, sail across waves, or race down freeways points to there being a degree of experimentation required to construct the perfect machine. On the one hand, this is a positive, as it supports Kakaru's pledge that success in Second Loop will require non-linear thinking, but on the other, it's arguable the extent of this sandbox's experience replete with emergent gameplay might be limited. We'll have to wait and see, but if successfully overcoming insurmountable obstacles relies on a rigid combination of specific items, then this isn't experimental at all. It's finding and gathering junk before systematically fitting one bit to another until something fits. Now, visually, Second Loop is an absolute treat. This once thriving metropolis's grayscale industry eliciting reflective sheen via constant rainfall, there's pitter patters of color, verdant nature seeps through cracks in metal, contrasting orca brickwork that has been crumbling for decades, yellow and green pipework threads through decrepit power stations. It's a setting that isn't entirely novel, however. Indeed, upcoming Neo Berlin 2087 harbors similarly bleak monochromacy. Last year's Armored Core 6 scorches through similar looking ground, too. As with a lot of these upcoming Unreal Engine 5 games that are utilizing revolutionary tech, from dynamic real time lighting and powerful texture capability, the proof is in the pudding. While Second Loop looks fantastic, there's always the question mark behind performance. Everything looks smooth as silk in the gameplay previews of the announcement trailer, unlike some of the more recent footage shared by Neo Berlin 2087's devs, 
hope that was a blip and they'll be able to pull it off. But what cost will this have on Second Loop's performance? Will the most elite rigs be able to exhibit all of the ray tracing goodness on display? Will maximum fidelity yield a consistent 60 frames per second? Alongside breathtaking visuals, this creative sandbox experience is also underlined by exhilarating in-your-face combat. Kakaru's blurb continues, stating you'll be facing off against advanced AI opponents that adapt to your playstyle and employ cunning strategies. We're seeing a conventional arsenal of pistols and machine guns working in tandem with some sort of hack and slash laser sword. And the action looks every bit as exciting as Kakaru are promising. We'll be able to pilot the game's towering mechs too, and while there are no glimpses of such combat in the game's announcement trailer, we are treated to a gif on the game's Steam page which showcases the inside of a mech's cockpit. Mech on mech brawling is promised, with searing lasers and bone crunching grapples and throws on offer, according to Kakaru. If it plays out in a way that's as cool and gratifying looking as the game's on-foot FPS action, then there's a chance this element of the game's combat will be very memorable indeed. One thing the body cam aesthetic is likely to provide is a weight to the mechs, something which the extremely similar in-scope Hawken achieved some 12 years ago. Let's hope that second loop's enemies pose more of a threat than Hawken's single-player rebirth, though. One thing this body cam trend is in danger of feeling like is something of a gimmick, a curio that'll have its day in the sun, then set over the horizon never to be seen again. It's already getting pigeonholed into FPS or horror titles, and to be fair, with good reason, given the immersive qualities such a camera perspective holds. But Second Loop looks to be genuinely attempting something novel with the approach. Body cam's inherent unsteadiness is sometimes its undoing, its uncanniness inducing nausea rather than immersiveness. but. Second Loop looks to have nailed a happy medium, whereby the camera shake is toned down but the tactile feeling is still present. Second Loop is developer Kakaru's debut outing, with the outfit also working as the game's publisher. For a first attempt, Second Loop looks extremely promising. There's always the danger of a title like this biting off more than it can chew, but let's hope for a minute that Kakaru can pull this off. There's no official word on release date or platforms just yet. PC is expected given the game's Steam listing, but Second Loop would feel right at home on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S too. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.